Jaden Animations isn't real animation, and I'm gonna prove it. And today we have the creator. This is a creator of Kipo on Netflix. I had some other guests lined up, but they couldn't make it, so we're gonna have to make do here. Hi, my name's Rad C. All right, well, hold up now. The go ahead, go ahead. Hi, my name is Rad Seacrest, creator of Kipo and the Age of Water. All right, that's I told you not to be boring. I t we talked about this. So today we're comparing some pro animation from Kipo to Jaden Animation's Pokemon Platinum video. This is YouTube versus Netflix animation. Who's better? My whole thoughts on this is Jaden Animations isn't real animation because there's no detail. Where's the detail? You gotta have the muscles, you gotta have the pores. Everybody knows that's what's good in art is the details. Actually on Kipo we cut out almost all the details because we tried to focus on story and character. You gonna do this the whole time? This is what I'm talking about right here. The details in this. This is amazing. Look at all the details in the backgrounds, right? I mean, the, the Jaden animation stuff is great. It's like you're focusing on all the important things. I can really follow the action. I can follow the acting. Like we did the same kind of thing in Kipo where it's just a simple pan with a cycle so we can save our budget and save our money for where it really counts. Here's, I'm gonna tell you something you might not understand. We want action, we want fighting. You ever been in a fight before? You ever heard of that? Don't hurt yourself there, sport. <laughs> DeVito against trainers, and when fighting this lovey-dovey couple... I mean, the fact that there's no backgrounds is kind of a testament to the quality. The fact that you're engaged with the characters, you're following them there, and you're not even noticing that there's not a background. In Kipo, like for instance in the scene with Yum Yin, it's just the same sort of starry cloud behind, because we're really trying to focus in on these two characters. of Timbercats. They need you a lot more than their tree. She's right. They need you, man. Uh... Maybe you're right. I've got three words for you. Concept art. You ever heard of it? Look at this background right here. Realer it looks, the cooler it is. Everybody already knows that. Next time, think before you talk. Go ahead and teach us, Mr. Mr. Netflix, about this shot. Well, I mean, I actually kind of love the way she's oh. designed. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I actually love the way she's designing the simplified anatomy. Like when I storyboard, I edit out almost every single contour and leave everything as a simple line. It makes it so much easier to move it around and focus on the storytelling, the storyboarding, without like having to worry about anatomy and details. It's got all the information you need with that simple sleeve line. You know the arms coming towards you. You ever heard of muscles? I don't think so. <laughs> Take a look at ZHC. Now that's professional. That's manly. That's some muscles right there. You ever heard of ZHC? Boop. He's got millions of subscribers. How many do you got? I mean, it has such nice, simple shots and setups. One of the awesome things about the OTS or the over the shoulder is it gives you this nice sense of depth with just a simple um, placement of the camera. The other thing it does too, is you really feel like you almost are the character in the scene experiencing it from their experience, rather than a third party view that isn't existing in the scene. Sometimes it's called subjective versus objective is another way to refer to it. When we were working on How to Train Your Dragon, they brought in Roger Deakins, and he told us a story about when he started out making music videos, they could film somebody like B.B. King and just hold the camera, and you were so impressed by the way he was moving his hands. And then they'd bring in this kind of hair metal band, and if you look closely, they're just hitting three chords, they're not really doing much. So he'd have to bring the camera to the back of the stage, he'd have to swoop in with smoke and lights, and all the camera work was actually to hide the fact that it wasn't that impressive, like with B.B. King. And I, I always take the same approach with filmmaking. If you can do a super simple shot, that means what you're showing is actually interesting. And if what you're showing is not interesting, you kind of got to hide it with the swoopy doopy, moving all over the place, ground plane sliding, you know. Hmm. <laughs> so what you're saying is Jaden Animations isn't as good as real animation. I, I think I'm saying the exact opposite of what you just said. It's better because it's focusing on the most important parts. I don't think the mic can hear you. All right, if that's what you want to do,
Be my guest. Be my guest. Beauty and the Beast. Disney. Live action remake. You ever heard of it? That's detail. Big franchise. You think this is a game? You think this is funny? It's not a game. Strike two. We head to Mount Coronet because Cyrus wants to go there and destroy the planet, I think. And we catch up to him at the Spear Pillar. Before we can run up and attack him, Mars and Jupiter- Okay, this is awesome. This is a great example of how to use cycles and layer pans. We did this exact kind of thing on Kipo. It looks great on camera, but it actually is just three three drawings repeating. We use that technique all the time on Kipo. The production techniques are like exactly the same as we did. Also, we animated Kipo on a bicycle, which is pretty easy, cool. Easy, easy. Don't be arrogant. It's like a great example of working smarter, not harder, because- Never heard of that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Back in the Orberg Mines, I caught Dwayne the Onyx, and I brought him to the fight because in case things got dicey, I would switch him in to buy time and heal up my other Pokemon. Basically, uh, Dwayne was death fodder. I mean, the most important part of animation is watching the characters grow, watching the characters change, watching character arcs. Like if you watch to the end of her video, there is a character arc there, and that's really interesting to watch. Dwayne can take a scratch. Look at that, Dwayne is, Dwayne is fine. He's fine, guys. Don't pull the, the sad nose for Dwayne. Don't worry about him. Oh my God. <laughs> Somehow, when Dwayne was supposed to die, he hung in there on one HP. And you know what? I respected the hell out of him for it. What a legend. But then I put him back in the box and moved on. We love doing that on Kipo. For instance, with Scarlamane, we uh, set him up as a villain, but then show his backstory and how he got that way. Is this even plugged in? The surface shall have kings once more, and the world will bow before Scarlamane. You could have escaped, but you were willing to get stuck in the Jaguar for a coliseum full of mutes. I mean, pay attention here. It's actually pretty cool. She's dropping all these subtle hints about what the underlying storyline is and where she's taking it by the end. Right before the fight, I swapped her with Failure the Shinx. Yep. Sorry, little guy. Failure looked up at the looming death that was Frostlass in front of her. And as I healed up Squoop, Failure was killed in its blizzard. It's really unfortunate we had to resort to it, but I give Failure a salute for stepping up and surrendering its life to the team. We won but it wasn't without sacrifice. We had a moment of silence for failure, the true MVP of the fight. Gone, but not forgotten. Man, I really love this. This is awesome. All right, okay, cool. All right. Look how cinematic this is. Okay, now pay attention because her character arc that she's been laying down the entire time is about to come up. And suddenly it's just me and the angel of darkness itself, Giratina. I threw the master ball and like that, it was over. I saved the world. Now to get back to my gym badges. Okay, so right here, it's amazing. Jaden just saved the world and we have this sort of classic false victory. We do this all the time in movies. It usually happens right at the midpoint. The character seems like they're gonna get everything they want and then boom, no, that's not enough. And we also did this in Kipo. And everybody does this, it's a classic thing, but it's more about how you do it than the fact that you're doing the same thing everyone else is doing. I saw this in Batman. It's not original. Well, nothing's truly original. You're just doing your own take on it. God, you're so annoying. Colgate takes out his scissor and hair across. Next up is Bertha. Right here we see a hint of her internal struggle, which is, it's amazing anytime you can see inside the mind of your character and really emotionally connect with them. Couldn't see inside your mind, because there's no mind. Um. <laughs> I had a cat. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Can't hear you. And suddenly, I'm at the entrance to the champion. The trainer who's been known to crush dreams in a single battle, and many still fear to this day. I took a deep breath. Things are going surprisingly well, and I don't know how to feel about it. And then, her Garchomp comes out. This is known to be one of the toughest boss Pokemon in the entire franchise, and rightfully so. That thing was made by Satan himself, and I'm sure even he fears what he has created. I immediately switched to Oops, who's the only Pokemon that can lead us to victory here. But then, 
Oops, it's crit. All right, here we go. This is the final fight, the climax. We've been building towards this moment. And we use these same techniques on Kipo that you're gonna see here. I sat there in disbelief knowing there wasn't anything I could have done. And the battle is basically unwinnable now. I brought out Shrimp to bullet punch it so we could get in a little bit of damage, but she was killed. Crit one shot. At this point, I had accepted defeat. Only Turt, C, and Flakes were left. It's hopeless at this point. Again, another storytelling moment. We always use the classic all is lost moment where it looks like there's no way your character is going to win. Like in Kipo, we had this sort of false all is lost moment when we think Kipo is going to be stuck in the Jaguar forever. Isn't there another way to turn her back? Mutes need to be saved from themselves. Cured. Fixed. I mean, the format here is sort of the TV format, and they do this a lot in Japanese anime where they really save the budget for the climax. So you use sort of tricks in the other parts of the show so that you can have more exciting animation in this area. This is where the money goes for animation. Final fight. Okay, here we go. Flakes came out, and against all odds, Flakes outsped Cynthia's Garchomp and killed it. I mean, at first glance, the Jaden animation might look like it's very simple or even crude, but in reality, it's more refined and more elegant than a lot of the stuff you'd see. They really focus on putting their effort and their focus on the storytelling. You're following the characters, you're following the personalities, and that's the most important thing in animation. Way above details and muscles and, you know, the stuff that people don't really care about watching. No, no one walks away from moving. Can't hear you. Damn, those Can't muscles hear you. Yeah, I mean, she's doing the same thing we do. It's cost efficient, you're saving your money, and it still feels great. You walk away feeling like there's this big, epic battle. The way you do the editing, the way you do the music, just even though there's not animation, it still feels like you just watched an epic battle. Still shots and action scenes, boom, she's got it down. Yeah, even when she's keeping it simple, she's using cam shake for impact, boom, like when things hit, it's freaking amazing. These are professional techniques she's using, and it's amazingly similar to exactly what we do on Keepa. Now that I'm looking at it, it might even be better than what we do. Get out. This is not real animation. It's lame, there's no backgrounds and there's no details. Get out of my house. I'm not, I'm not joking now. I'm, I'm, the video's done. We're done. Um, do you have a show on Netflix? Move. Get out of my way. Wait, wait, wait. You, I, I shouldn't have said that. I'm, I'm sorry, man. You know that's the soft spot for me. It's okay, man. It's okay. I've been nothing but nice to you. <laughs> that I've been nothing but nice to you and you, you're mean, you said mean thing. I know, it, it's not real animation. It's okay, come here. No, don't touch me! Okay. You're right. It is real animation. I was just so insecure about my own inabilities. I guess it felt so much better to hate than it did to learn. Suddenly, there was a chance. Flakes went in for the Dragon Claw, and the battle was over. We won. As Cynthia is congratulating me, a sudden feeling of overwhelming guilt washes over my entire body, so intense it almost knocks me down. I don't think I deserve this. Something here isn't right. This wasn't meant for me. Are there some things you can't escape, even when you try everything you can do to alter it? I don't know the answer. I may be able to sit on this throne now and thank all the Pokemon that put in everything to help me get here. All the hard work, blood, sacrifices we made, but I don't think I can ever accept this victory. I don't know what ending was meant for me. And I don't think I ever will.
Oh my god, can I talk? Here. Thanks. This is... Huh? This is so beautiful. That was it. That was her internal struggle. You're right. That's the message. Was it all worth it? She's sitting on the throne now, but was it all worth it? All of her, She sacrificed so many people that were so close to her. So many Pokemon. Do the ends justify the means? I could see what you're saying now. It's characters. Yes. Wow. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, do you think... Do you think I'll ever get to go through a character arc? Well, probably not. 